Okay. So as uh, Ruth uh, said earlier, this, this is an information meeting. We're not asking anybody to make any decisions at this time, but we want to give you a feel for uh, some of the projects that we're looking at over the next few years that fall into the maintenance and repair and wants category. So uh, a spoiler alert here, near the end of this, you're gonna see a chart that has a pretty big total number. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get to that point. But um, before we get there, here's kind of an outline of our agenda. We're gonna, a little bit of background. And then for those of you who read some of the annual report or have seen old facilities minutes, you've seen us use a term condition assessment. So I'll explain a little bit what that is. Talk then about uh, our building needs, which most of those came from uh, the uh, condition assessment that was done by an architect engineering firm. Then we'll talk about other projects and most of the ones you'll see on that list are ones that have either been uh, mentioned in our facilities meetings or members of the council. Uh, so we're, we're sure that that list is incomplete and we can add and uh, delete from it. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what our current estimate for costs are and then some of our funding options. Well, I'm, I, uh, I, <laughs> I mentioned that you're gonna see a large number, but you know, our, our church has a history of being willing to make large investments to keep our facility uh, in good condition. Just in the last 15 years, uh, we did this huge project here in Chapin Hall that you're sitting, that was over $600,000. Uh, in 2012, we completely renovated the heating system, replacing the boiler, uh, increasing the number of heating zones, et cetera. And that was $140,000. And then just, uh, I think it was 2015, we put a new roof on the church because uh, it was needed. Uh, most of the funding uh, has come from three sources either taking a withdrawal from our memorial fund. Uh, some of these projects have included gifts. And then uh, occasionally we've had capital campaigns. I think the last capital campaign we had was back during the Chapin Hall renovation. Uh, and that was to fund part of the cost of that program. About, as I recall, about half of the cost of that program was provided by the gift of one of our former members, uh, about a quarter from fundraising and about a quarter from the uh, memorial fund. Then a key thing for us now is in 2017, we discovered that there are two organizations here in Connecticut that provide grants for historical preservation. One is the um, Connecticut Trust for Historic Preservation. The other is the State Historic Preservation Office. So we, uh, we trustees facilities started discussions with them. Uh, eventually, uh, for a variety of reasons, we decided to continue those discussions with the state uh, organization, in part because they offered the possibility of larger grants. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the things that was common to both organizations, uh, if you wanna to come to them for a grant for some construction project, you need to have some kind of a plan for your historic preservation. And that's, that's what led us to what, uh, this, what we use the term condition assessment. Um, the, uh, and both of these organizations actually provided grants to do that planning stage. The, the condition assessment, some people would use the term an envelope study. It's a complete look at your facility, the physical facility, from the inside out, the structure, the condition of your structure, uh, the condition of your uh, interior uh, furnishings and, and offices, rooms, condition of the exterior of the building. 
Uh, and so that's what we pursued. We, uh, we got a grant um, from the state for that early study that covered 50% of the cost of that study. And, and we'll show you some of the results of that in a minute. So to repeat, uh, the list you're gonna see of projects uh, later, which is about 20, it's a, we're early in the game here. We've, we've had others on and we've removed them and we're, we're looking for our questions from you. We're looking for input from you uh, and particularly in what you see as the priorities. So, so let's, let's talk about uh, this condition assessment. Uh, we interviewed a half a dozen or so uh, architects who have experience doing historic preservation. And they, they gave, got a brief tour of the building and then we selected one. Uh, and it happened to be a local firm in Wethersfield. They came in with a team that included structural engineer people with a lot of experience in historic preservation, and they uh, examined the church in detail. We had said there were some things that we didn't think they needed to look at. They didn't need to look at the roof, we just replaced it. Uh, we're pretty confident in our uh, heating system. They didn't need to look at that and some of the other mechanicals. But they did take a close look. They were up in the steeple. Uh, they were up in the attic looking at the structural integrity of the old meeting house and uh, up in the attic on the other parts of the church. So they, they did a real thorough job. And uh, the state covered about 50% of the cost of that study. And I think it was about $20,000. So we, what we got from that is a big report here. If anybody wants to come up and page through my copy, you're more than welcome. But there may be more, maybe more information here than you really wanna look at at this time. <clears throat> So the, the summary and, and one of the handouts we'll have for you is kind of a, their executive summary of what they found. One, as we all know, the old meeting house is on the National uh, Register for Historic Buildings. Uh, generally, the, the, our, our building is in very good condition. Structurally, it's very sound. I, I think before they looked at it, uh, these, uh, this team was afraid they would go into the steeple in the attic and find that we had some serious problems. We don't. But there are certainly areas, and a lot of them are on the exterior, where there's been wear and tear over the years, and we, we need to do some work. And most of those uh, uh, areas you could probably classify as just maintenance. I mean, it, it's been, for example, uh, the 15 years since we did the last complete exterior painting of the church. We've had our painter back a couple times for some touch up, but that's a pretty long time for, a, for the old meeting house, which is a wood structure. So those are the sorts of the things that uh, we'll be looking at. So this next chart, chart shows you uh, the key items from the condition assessment, uh, the team had three categories, what they called critical things they thought we should do definitely in the one to three year time frame. Another was recommended. Uh, and then uh, the last category they had was uh, optional. Now, uh, we haven't taken all their uh, recommendations. There are a couple we decided to ignore. For example, they thought the church would look a lot nicer if we put some fancy new storm windows on. So we said, no, nah, we don't think we need that. So that's not included in the list at this time. So uh, window restoration, that is in the sanctuary. If anybody's looked at our windows, you can see that uh, th there's wear and tear, the, the grids or the, the Muttons, uh, yeah, there's, there's glazing that's missing and stuff. So th they thought that was one of the critical uh, things. Now we have been, there's a firm in Middletown that specializes in restoration of windows and we have a quote for them and you'll see that later. But they would, they would uh, that complete restoration and we have over 30 windows in the old meeting house. 
it, it's a sizable product, but it would, it would basically put the windows back in almost the original condition. All the paint would be stripped off, uh, any wood repair to the sash and the grid work would be done and reglazed. And they also, one of the benefits of their process is uh, they have a way of add, adding a balance system. In, anybody who's tried to raise the windows in the uh, sanctuary knows it's like going to the gym at your, your, your workout weight training for the, for the day. So they have, a, uh, it's an ingenious, it's hardly visible system they could install as part of their process. It would make it much easier for us to open the windows. Certainly uh, a full painting of the exterior uh, they recommended and there, there are a number of areas where there is some uh, wood repair around the church. Good example would be the threshold for the doors here at the front of the church probably need to be replaced. So there's some work there that needs to be done. Uh, they also recommended um, that we uh, repair the lower parapet and consider replacing the upper parapet. So what are they, you ask? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the, the picture on the left there was taken in 2007, just after we completed the church. Those two railings at the very top of the, steel, the steeple, those are the parapets. The, the one uh, at the very top is right up on top of the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, <laughs> the the picture at the right was taken in 2013 when we removed the top parapet because uh, its condition had become uh, so bad we were afraid a good strong wind would blow it off or part of it off and who would want to be walking along on the street when that came crashing down so uh, I suppose a lot of people haven't noticed that that's been missing since 2013. Not, not too many people uh, look up at the top of the steeple when they come to church. So, um, I mean, that would be an option not to do anything with that. So that's why the, why the architect just put that as a recommended option. Uh, there's some uh, work to do on our interior uh, finishes. Uh, a few of the ceiling in some rooms need some work. Uh, and there's some, particularly where the 1952 edition meets the 1993 edition, there's some uh, problem with the, the tiles uh, on the main hallway and, and the upper that, that needs some work. Those are smaller um, items than the, the first few ones that I mentioned. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, and the last one, uh, they just put in a optional category, that's the floor of the room we're in now. Uh, it, it's certainly still serviceable, but if you take a close look at it, you'll see lots of marks and indentations uh, from, from the chairs we use. Um, so it's certainly shown the wear of uh, the time we've had it, which is about 15 years. Their recommendation when we do replace the floor is to put down something more durable like a ceramic or porcelain type tile. So that, that's just their recommendation. It's the newest floor in Germany. Pardon? It's the newest floor. <laughs> yeah, true. <Sure. laughs> yeah, go figure, right? <laughs> So, okay, let's uh, skip ahead here. So this is a list of other uh, proposed projects that has come out of facilities meeting and council meeting and other discussion. Um, generally to refresh the hallways. And I think what we mean there is uh, paint lighter colors, uh, particularly in the 1952 edition, that old, uh, 1950s knotty pine uh, woodwork, it makes it a pretty dark hallway. So we, in some of the rooms, we've already repainted that. And that's what we have in mind there. New signage, exterior and interior. 
the, I'm not going to go through all of these. The, the third one there is to possibility of adding a bathroom up on the upper floor. The, the idea there is if we go ahead and look to rent some of the rooms up there that aren't needed for classrooms anymore, it really makes it more appealing to have a bathroom up there. We've talked with a plumber. Uh, it's feasible. He, he just hasn't gotten back to us with the estimate yet. We've also talked uh, initially with a real estate agent and her view is that we could get roughly uh, $6,000 a year for each room that we can rent. So that would be a sizable uh, income for us for the rooms that aren't used anymore. Uh, I think some of these uh, are um, self-explanatory. I, I will uh, just, uh, because it looks kind of strange on there, upgrade the sanctuary lighting. So that, we're not talking about a big project there. It's just the spotlights that focus down on the pulpit area and where the choir sing, they're actually not working now. So we need to repair them, uh, but we're also maybe looking to have something that's a little bit better than the existing. For all the eyes. <laughs> so uh, we've actually talked to one contractor. We're not satisfied with the proposal, so we're continuing to look to get maybe a better estimate for that. Uh, anybody see anything on the list you'd like me to talk about? Nancy. Uh, the ADA improvements, that's, that's just kind of a catch-all. There, is there something more that we can do to make uh, uh, the rooms or the sanctuary a little bit more accessible? Uh, so that, that's really kind of a wide open category. We don't have specifics in mind right now. I know that's been looked at a number of times in the past, and we want to take a look at that again. Susan. <laughs> yeah, so uh, actually a number of years ago, we did talk with a company about putting uh, solar panels on the roof of the church. We're not sure that that affects our uh, historic designation, uh, but it didn't look attractive at that time. Uh, maybe it looks attractive now for us. I mean, we do have a pretty sizable roof that uh, uh, sees a lot of sunlight. My own, my own personal preference would be if we could be part of a community solar farm. Uh, but uh, Connecticut has not been one of the leaders in that area. So any other questions before I move on? Jake. <clears throat> Uh, sure. So what we have in mind right now, we've continued to work forward on a project to uh, basically replace the lower parapet and a similar one on the upper parapet. So they would look like the old ones. Uh, they're just much more robust in design and I think uh, much more enduring in their ability to, to last a, a long time. Uh, we were, uh, <clears throat> one, one of the first things we did, uh, I, I can, in facilities is we kind of looked at that uh, condition assessment and said, what do we think the pr priorities here of what they've recommended? And I think we said, well, certainly the, the parapets, if we want to do it, and it's a big enough project, we would have to come to the congregation before we finally go ahead. Uh, the windows restoration in the sanctuary if we want to do it. Again, that's a big enough project. We would have to come to the congregation before we go ahead. And then the uh, exterior painting. And our thought process was it, if we're going to do either or both of those other two projects that we ought to do those before we do the exterior painting. So we've gone ahead on the, the parapets. We were fortunate that during the period of COVID, the, the, the state office, um, they paid completely for uh, a design for the parapets. Wow. <laughs> so that, that fell into the, the planning care 
category. So we have that design in hand and we're pretty confident that's a very good design. Uh, we've also gone back to the state again, using the estimate you'll see in a second uh, for the cost to replace them. And we, just in May, we got approval from the state that they would cover 50% of that cost. So we put in a cost of 120,000. So, and we have two years, so they would cover $60,000 if it turned out to be $120,000. Does that answer your question, Jake? Yeah. Uh, damn. Uh, I'm I think it might a little bit. I mean, uh, the windows are a little drafty, I, I think, in some of them. So, I, But I wouldn't hold out hope for a lot of um, great improvement uh, from that point of view. <laughs> so before I go to the next slide, which has the cost, let me, uh, good point to segue, all the things we've talked about so far, the things that we're looking at, uh, during the last year, the preschool sought and received a grant from the Office of Early Childhood Development to do some upgrading in the classroom. And that's some work that's gonna take place this summer. They're putting a new carpet in there. They're gonna paint the classroom. They're actually gonna paint this lower hallway and the bathrooms. So that's something the preschool has gone ahead and we're gonna benefit from that. So, Bill. Yes, I believe so, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let me go to this next slide. And I know the print on this is really, really small, uh, but, but th this is one of the handouts if anybody wants to take it with a... <laughs> Uh, sure. So ju just starting at the top, the a current estimate for the uh, replacing the parapets, parapets is one hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, the window restoration, 135,000, and, that, and that's based not only on the condition assessment, but also on a, a quote from the, the firm in Middletown that does this. Exterior painting, uh, we think would be in the neighborhood of $60,000, and that's from uh, a quote from the person who did the last full exterior painting and uh, some of the touch-up work. And we're, uh, so we're pretty sure that all those first ones would be eligible for a 50% grant and maybe some of the others would be. So uh, the big number at the bottom is uh, $762,000. So that's what I was saying earlier that th these, these add up and so if we did all these, we're looking at a very sizable uh, investment uh, over the next few years. The, um, those first ones, those ones that were designated as kind of critical, they account for the biggest, a little over 40% of what our current total estimate is. So, uh, can I answer any questions? Uh, Chris. Yeah, I'm just a little puzzled 
the sanctuary window restoration by like our individual citizens, 7,500. the end of it, it's not to have a window. Okay. That really is a sensible way to go over your phase out there. There's a lot of advances in those. Yes. Right, yes. Is there a way we could keep our storage staff maybe get some of the money? Well, uh, short answer is we haven't found a way to do that yet, but uh, uh, I mean, we can continue to look. So um, w one of the things about the existing woodwork up there is uh, it's really good wood. You know, in 1800, they really put really good wood in stuff. So if you can restore it back to its near original condition, you have something that's pretty close to like a new window. <laughs> um, we, we did talk to another firm in Connecticut that uh, restores windows historically, and they, uh, they do a little bit different approach. They take out, uh, for example, in our 12 over 12, they would take out all the panes. They would put in um, an insulated glass unit. So that would be a slightly more efficient uh, and then put grids in it. But uh, we, we floated that idea by the state preservation office and they said, no, we, we won't accept that. We, you can't get a grant for that. So uh, other questions? Yeah. Good. yeah, good point. Thanks, Lair. So I think I'm going to let uh, Dave Hall uh, chat with you for a while about some of the next uh, slides we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hilaire's point about you got to pay for it first and then you get reimbursed afterwards. And in fact, it's not, you know, on a $100,000 project, we are typically going to be paying the contractor and in installments over the course of that project. So, for example, 25000 a month over a four month period. We got to pay them the whole four $25,000 payments before we then go to the state and say, okay, you owe us 50. So it does create some cash flow difficulties, uh, challenges, let me call them. Uh, they're not insurmountable challenges, but they make my life in interesting. And it's something that every time Dave and Steve and the facilities group goes out and gets quotes, I say, recognize that just because we only have to spend 60,000 for this project, we really have to spend 120,000 of cash, and then we get the 60 back. We've gone through that uh, exercise with several of our other um, projects. In fact, this conditions assessment where they paid us the whole 11,000. We first had to pay the 11,000 and then the state paid us back. And they did. And uh, the prior project, I forget what it was, but I mean, it all worked the way it was supposed to, but uh, it does create a, a uh, challenge. So how do we pay for all this? Well, I counted, there's about 30 people in this room. So if you all would drop off a $25,000 check on your way out, then, then we shortcut an awful lot of the rest of these slides and we can just go home. Assuming that that probably isn't gonna work. Uh, obviously we need to prioritize that list of projects. Some of the ones that we probably want to do, um, we just have educated guesses as to what they're going to cost at this point. Oh, it sounds like we need more uh, more dishware for the kitchen. Um, and there may be some things on that list that we'll decide. We just don't think they're cost justified based on what we want. But so we priori prioritize the list. We, as Dave said, applied for grants for those that are eligible. We've already applied for a grant for the tower restoration. Uh, and uh, so we have some money already uh, available to us over the next few years. We contribute from the memorial fund to the extent that, that we can. Uh, you probably noticed that uh, investment markets have not been behaving very well this year. 
Um, and so this would not be a good time to make it additional withdrawals from our memorial fund. We're already hitting it pretty hard just to keep this plant, uh, to keep the church going this year. So I, again, that's one of the other things I keep telling facilities. Don't assume we're just gonna keep tapping the memorial fund, especially this year, given what's going on. Uh, markets will come back. I'm convinced of that, but there's a good time to be pulling money out, extra money out, and there's a bad time. And this is a very bad time. Um, and the other option is to uh, start a capital improvement fund uh, where you all contribute your $25,000 checks. Um, yeah, yeah. Can you cash? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a cash discount. Yes, cash discount. Sure, why not? Why not? Um, so does this mean if we have to raise money to do this, does this mean that we uh, have to wait until after we've started raising money to start doing some of these projects? And the quick answer is no. Uh, we can get started. Some We have some money set aside, as, as you noticed. I think it may have been in the last newsletter. Yeah, we've, we've had a number of bequests of the church over the last five years, some of which has been spent on some special projects along the way, but uh, much of which has not been spent because we knew we had some things coming along the way that's actually been sitting in a money market fund, so it has not lost value uh, since it's come in, and that's about sixty, a little over $60,000 right now. Uh, and we've also had some conversations with a few members who uh, have committed that they can perhaps start paying off some of what they will contribute to this early so that we'll have some funds available to us uh, while we're in the process of raising other money. Um, we could potentially get a loan from, uh, from um, the UCC building, uh, the Cornerstone Fund. I know there's some UCC related entities that can loan you money. Uh, again, as interest rates now are going up and up and up, that may turn out to be not the best way to do it. Um, but that is an option um, depending on cash flow timing. Um, so um, we will definitely have to have a capital improvement fundraising campaign. As Dave mentioned, the last time we did this was 15 years ago when we were building this room. Um, we have uh, begun discussions with the UCC Building and Loan Fund, which sounds like a funny entity. They're not actually, wouldn't actually be lending us money. They would be helping us organize a fundraising, uh, fundraising campaign. Um, and more on this as, as we get worse. We've just had some preliminary discussions with them at this point. Um, but assuming that we do go forward with a capital fundraising campaign, we will need a steering committee. They recommend 13 people. As I said, boy, we don't have any other group in this church with 13 people on it. So, so we'll need a lot of hands go up when we say who is willing to be on this uh, on this committee, but we also hope to get it started within the next year, probably a year or less, because we wanna get as much of this done as possible in the next five years in time to for our 300th birthday celebration. We want the church to be as spiffy as possible. Spiffy, is that an old word? Yeah. I guess it is, but you're all, you all know what spiffy means. Um, well, we also hope to extend our uh, appeals to the community at large, uh, businesses, neighborhoods, whatever, try to cast the net as wide as possible. And that's where having an outside consultant, we think will help us figure out the best way to do that as well. Um, so, and again, as we get into these projects, we'll need to have spe special congregational meetings to approve the expenditure with plans, more uh, detailed plans and places for each and a approval to begin a capital fundraising campaign. So nothing is starting tomorrow. We're just trying to let you know what's coming so that when we do get around to this, you shouldn't be able to say, geez, I had no idea. Amen. Yeah.
We're at the end unless you keep it going. Uh, how's that for instead of any other questions, comments? Uh, questions or comments? Uh, the handout has the list of projects and you need a little time towards that. So you can give comments at any time. Be safe to extend that yes. <laughs> Uh, really appreciate this because this, uh, you know, both the fundraising campaign and some of these capital individual projects um, will require congregational approval. So it's really good that so many people stayed to hear more about this. And questions are always welcome or input about. Uh, oh. Uh, can somebody read me the questions in the chat, please? Uh, input also about your priorities. Okay, and with that, yes, Marge. <laughs> I can personally attest the number of hours that people on facilities put into keeping this building in good repair. Okay, go in peace, enjoy that good day.